뭐야? 소독해? 어, 요즘도 저런 걸 하네. 그러게요. 창문 닫어. 나도 봐. 공짜로 집안에 소독도 하고 곱등도 없애고. 그래 그래. 요새 곱등이 너무 많아. <laughs> Bong Joon Ho's tour de force black comedy thriller Parasite is a careful examination of growing class tensions in modern society. Through this film, Bong demonstrates his mastery of oral and visual storytelling. The sleek transitions, irony-laced dialogue, and morally ambiguous characters come together to deliver one of the most riveting movies of the decade. Yes! Wow. <laughs> the film centers on an abjectly poor family who rely on cunning and manipulation to survive in their harsh society. The narrative begins when the son, Ki Woo, is presented with an opportunity to tutor the daughter of the rich Park family. Due to the trusting and gullible dispositions of the Parks, Ki Woo and his family are able to effectively deceive their way into obtaining service jobs in the household. 그런 여자를 도려내려면 우리도 뭔가 준비를 해야겠다. However, it's not until long that the family discovers they are not the only ones mooching off of the Parks. In a long and suspenseful scene reminiscent of Hitchcock, it's revealed that the park's former housekeeper has been harboring her husband in an unknown bunker beneath the house to escape the violence and coercion of his debt collectors. This scene marks a significant shift in tone and brings to fruition the meaning behind the film's title. After a long and miserable night in which the poor family essentially kills the former housekeeper in front of her helpless husband and run home only to discover their semi-basement has flooded with sewage water, we see how these jobs that the family once enjoyed are now becoming grating and tiresome. This is slipped in through subtle moments and interactions. That's the lesson, is it? Oh, I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to close my eyes. We can glean from these scenes that there is a new clarity with which the family now views themselves. At first glance, the title Parasite represents the way these members of the lower classes leech off of the good nature and generosity of the Park family. But what Bong is trying to tell us in the aforementioned moments is that the Parks are also leeching off of the lower classes by living comfortably off the backs of their labor. It's here that the film presents us with a frightening but important question. In late capitalist society, who are the Parasites? The difficulty of answering this question can be explained with two concepts borrowed from the School of Cultural Studies, cool capitalism and cultural hegemony. In The Coolness of Capitalism, Jim McGuigan states, Neoliberal capitalism has constructed popular legitimacy of such a resilient kind that it goes beyond management ideology and propaganda into the texture and common sense of everyday life. To support this idea, he uses the example of Apple, who through their sleek and shiny products have become so embedded in Western culture that we have become blind to the company's very real exploitation of their outsourced workers. Foxconn is not a sweatshop. I mean, you go to this place and it's a factory, uh, but my gosh, I mean, they've got restaurants and movie theaters and hospitals and swimming pools. And I mean, it's a, it's a, for a factory, it's a pretty nice factory. This disaffection amongst consumers to the acute poverty and exploitation of others is what McGuigan calls cool capitalism. To understand how cool capitalism plays out in Parasite, let's look at this scene from the second act. Oh, 
박 선생님 오늘도 잘 매개지시고 재워주시고 Respect! Here, the former housekeeper's husband, who has been hiding in the bunker for four years, maintains his sanity through a daily routine of hitting the light switches to illuminate Mr. Park's path as he walks up the stairs at night. Mr. Park, unaware of the bunker beneath his house, is led to believe that these motion-censored lights are a marvel of modern technology. This scene distills McGuigan's idea that Mr. Park is blind to the fact that these luxuries he enjoys in his everyday life are afforded to him through the hard labor of someone beneath him. It's no coincidence that the housekeeper's husband lives physically beneath the parks. This obliviousness towards the suffering and labor of others at times borders on indifference, which is exhibited most clearly in the park's relationships with the poor family. For example, as Gitek drives Mrs. Park home from grocery shopping, she exclaims to a friend on the phone that the storm from the night before was a blessing in disguise, completely ignorant to the fact that thousands of people in the city were displaced as a result, including Gitek. Another example of this ignorance is how the Park clan displays their physical aversion to the smell of the poor family. This theme becomes increasingly prevalent throughout the film, as their reactions to smell become more exaggerated. In Purity and Danger, Mary Douglas suggests that cleanliness and hygiene are social constructs. She states, There is no such thing as absolute dirt. It exists only in the eyes of the beholder. In Parasite, we see how the Park's revulsion to the smell of people like Etek is actually a revulsion to people they perceive as lesser than themselves. Their palpable desire to escape these smells, like when Mr. Park plugs his nose as he flees from the mayhem of his garden party, signals to the viewer that those who benefit from capitalism distance themselves from the have-nots, both metaphorically and physically. In an interview with GQ, Bong said, What the Parks really want, and this is something Mr. Park says in the film, is they draw a line over their sophisticated world and they don't let anyone cross it. They're not interested in the outside world, the subway, and people who might perhaps smell. They want to push everyone outside of that line, and they want to remain safe behind it. Much like how consumers of Apple do not need to think about the exploitation of Foxconn because its workers live on the other side of the world, the parks do not have to worry themselves about the poor because they are physically isolated from the nearby slums. The smell of poverty is an ugly reminder to the parks that suffering is actually nearby. While the parks present as well-intentioned and kind-hearted people, they choose to be ignorant to the extreme poverty that surrounds them because they are comfortable with the lifestyles afforded to them at the expense of the impoverished. They recoil from the smell for fear of being confronted with the reality outside of their privileged bubble. Late capitalism and the ever-increasing division between rich and poor is able to persist in our contemporary world through what Antonio Gramsci calls cultural hegemony. For Gramsci, cultural hegemony is achieved through inducing the consent of the majority of subaltern or subordinate groups to a given socio-political constellation. Throughout the film, Mr. Park speaks often about a line he draws between himself and his employees. This line, of course, connotes a level of professionalism that Mr. Park expects of his employees, but what it also represents is a division he has established to maintain his status as a superior. Mr. Park expresses his satisfaction with the former housekeeper because she never oversteps her boundaries, but Kitek, on the other hand, is always teetering on the edge of this line. In this sense, the former housekeeper consents to her status as a subordinate, whereas Kitek, who eventually revolts against his subjugation by killing Mr. Park, becomes increasingly conscious of his class and the hegemonic social order that keeps him there. The poor characters have deep feelings of admiration and reverence towards the Park family. For example, in the same scene, each member of the poor family, in spite of themselves, goes around discussing what they like about the Parks. This admiration runs even deeper with the housekeeper's husband, whose masochistic headbanging is his version of paying respect to the man who he believes has saved him. This fact! Cultural hegemony, which favors the ideology of the ruling classes, teaches anyone who falls outside the dominant worldview that the dominant culture is something to aspire to. This can take place in many forms. My skin so white, but it's a good thing from Come on, natural swipe plus papaya. Feel your skin and soul sing. The prevailing standard of Eurocentric beauty has compelled women around the world to alter their appearances in an effort to achieve this conception of normality. Democracy has become such a dominant standard for a fair and just society that countries are now ranked on an index based on how democratic they are. And the list goes on. 
With the case of late capitalism, the ruling class is the wealthy, and in Parasite, Ki Wu and his family alter their appearances and overall dispositions to fit into the mold of higher status individuals. Their reverence for the people they are using reflects an innate yearning to become them both economically and socially. Bong tricks the viewer into thinking there will be a happy ending, as we watch Gi Tech, who has been hiding in the bunker after killing Mr. Park, reunite with his family who have now made enough money to buy the Park's house. However, this momentary happiness is dissolved, as it's revealed that the scene is only an aspiration written by Ki Wu in a letter to his father. In an interview, Bong reveals that it would take 564 years for Ki Wu to save enough money to buy the house. This directly contradicts the mantra of contemporary capitalism, which has attempted to convince people that with a little hard work and determination, anyone can achieve higher economic status. The reality is that through cultural hegemony, the rich are able to stay rich by manufacturing the consent of the masses while creating the illusion of social mobility. Ironically, the poor daughter, Ki Jung, is regarded as the only member of the family who fits into the wealthy environment. But she is also the only member of the family to be killed. When all is said and done, the rich family is able to escape the horror of their situation while the poor family is trapped in it. Neoliberal capitalism takes economic responsibility away from the government and places it into the hands of free market institutions and private individuals. In this type of society, your value as a person is weighed upon your ability to sell your labor for a wage. What it boils down to is a massive disparity in wealth that regards the wealthy as winners and the poor as losers in the free market game. This is where we see things like hostile architecture, that prioritizes the needs and aesthetics of corporate enterprises over the needs of the hungry and homeless. These defensive strategies become mechanisms for hiding the indigent out of sight for fear of disrupting the wealthy social order. The great fallacy of this system is that every individual starts off with equal access to opportunity and can therefore compete on an equal playing field, which is simply not the truth. And when we look at the poor characters in Parasite fighting amongst themselves, vying to maintain their subordinate positions, we see that there is no attempt or even ability to overthrow the prevailing system of domination, but rather it's a competition between the poor of who can be the least destitute. In a capitalist society, the prevailing conservative argument is that social democracy, higher taxes, and budget deficits only serve to extract from the hard-earned pockets of the rich and put this money into the hands of the lazy and deceitful poor. But what Parasite astutely points out is that the relationship between the rich and poor is largely parasitic in the opposite direction. The poor are often poor because capitalistic enterprises are unwilling to compensate fairly for their labor in order to maximize a profit. While the jobs occupied by Ki Wu's family offer them proximity to wealth, at the end of the day their wages do not provide them enough means to escape destitution. Rather, the degrading and emotional labor they provide for the parks only truly benefits the parks. At the end of the film, with Ki Tech left to an uncertain fate in the bunker and Ki Wu relegated to his basement, we're left with the bleak reality that the current capitalistic order is unyielding and unforgiving. What's more, this cruel system can be easily normalized. After all, the greatest trick late capitalism ever pulled was to convince the world it doesn't exist. This is the harsh reality of the world we now live in, and this is why Parasite should terrify us all.